Hey, I'm Allie, and in this quick tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to mask and track by hiding this big circular sticker on this iPad here. The technique you're gonna learn can be used for lots of different things. Let's say you want to hide a logo that's moving around on screen, or you want to hide something that's in the background of a wall. By the end of this video, you're gonna know how to do just that. Oh, and we have over 60 other filmmaking tutorials on our Ally and Will YouTube channel and release new videos weekly. So check them out and subscribe if you're into editing and shooting tutorials and film gear reviews. We're in Premiere Pro, we'll select this clip on our timeline, hold down the Alt or Option key on our keyboard and drag up to the second track to create a duplicate of this clip. Next, turn the visibility of the original clip on track one off by clicking on the eyeball icon so it's crossed out. We don't want to be able to see the original clip because if we could see it, we wouldn't be able to easily spot our mask and it would just make things confusing. In the effect panel search bar, type in crop. There it is in the transform folder. Drag this effect onto your clip on the V2 track. Pop on over to the effect controls panel. And before we adjust the crop effect, let's get a closer look at our clip so we can choose the best area of the iPad to use as a mask. Go to the program monitor, click the drop down menu here and change the view to 200% so we're nice and zoomed in. I'll just scroll down here so we can see the iPad and circle and effect controls under the crop effect select the free draw bezier tool and over an area of the iPad that's a more solid color that doesn't have any distracting elements let's draw a tall rectangle this will be the part of the iPad that we use to cover the circle now the decision of the shape of the mask you create should be made on a clip to clip basis but I'm choosing to draw a mask that's rectangle and larger than the circle because this rectangle mask will blend better with the rest of the iPad and be a lot less no noticeable, not noticeable at all once we're done with it, than if we were to draw a circle mask in this case. Okay, we've got our mask now under the crop effect. Let's bring the crop over from the left by scrolling it from 0% to 100%. Cool. So now we have a rectangle cropped out of our clip, but we actually want the opposite of this. We want just a rectangle mask showing the gray of the iPad and the entire clip around it to be cropped out. So we can quickly do that by check marking inverted. And now we have our mask that will track over the circle. Let's scrub through this clip to make sure no distracting elements are gonna show up in our mask. Ugh. And here we can see the top edge of the iPad starting to show. We don't want that to be visible, so let's select these top points of the mask and drag them a little lower so we're just seeing that solid gray part of the iPad. Great. Oh, and our mask feather set to 10 by default, which subtly softens the edges of the mask instead of having a sharp edge. In this case, I'll leave the feather at 10. Depending on the clip you're working with, you may choose to increase the feather or decrease it. Let's go back to fit view and turn the clip on the V1 track back on. I'm gonna select the mask under the crop effect so we can see the blue outline of it and scrub through the clip. Okay, so we have our mask, but as the iPad moves around on screen, the mask staying still. So we gotta track this mask, making sure that the V2 track clip, which is the mask, is selected on our timeline and that our cursor is at the very beginning of the clip because this is where we'll have our tracking begin. In the effect controls panel, we can adjust the position of the X axis until the mask is covering the circle, like so. Under the mask drop down menu where it says mask path, click on the circular toggle to the left to place your first keyframe, which will hold the position of the mask in this spot. Next, we'll use Premiere's mask track, which does a pretty great job of tracking. Press the play icon and this is gonna take a few seconds. Okay, these are the tracked keyframes that are now holding the position of the mask over each frame of the clip. Let's check out how successful the tracking job was and as you can see, it's done a pretty good job overall, but there are a few areas where the tracking missed the mark, which is okay because we can manually adjust the mask's position in these areas. Let's just get a closer look at our mask, and this line indicates the playhead's position and where it is within your clip. Depending on which keyframe it sits over, if we move our mask, the new position will be saved to that specific keyframe. Click on the mask here to show the blue outline of it, and we can bring our cursor over the program monitor where the mask is. Doing this brings up a hand icon, which allows us to click down and move the position of this mask so it covers the circle it's peeking out. 
awesome. This new position has been saved to that keyframe. Let's play ahead to see where the circle peeks out again and move our mask again to hide it. And now that we have the new position saved, let's check this clip out. Awesome, so there you go. That's how you mask and track distracting elements to hide them as they move around in your clip in Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoyed this video. For new weekly videos all about filmmaking, subscribe to our channel and feel free to check out the over 60 videos we have teaching filmmaking tips, tricks, cool things you can do in After Effects, Premiere Pro, Adobe Audition and more. We'll see you in another video.